हेलो दिस इज डॉक्टर राखी भट्टाचार्य फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैनेजमेंट स्टडीज एंड एम कॉम ई कॉमर्स ठाकुर कॉलेज ऑफ साइंस एंड कॉमर्स आई एम गोइंग टू टेक अप मोटिवेशन एज अ टॉपिक फॉर डिस्कशन टुडे बिकॉज ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैज मेनी पीपल वर्किंग विद डिफरेंट मोटिव नाउ इफ द मोटिव कम टूगेदर टूवर्ड्स वन पर्टिकुलर कॉज then the accomplishment of goal become very very easy so now what is motivation motivation basically derived from the word motive and motive is that inner state of our mind that activates and directs our behavior it make us move or act so motivation can be defined as a inner drive which is pushing us towards accomplishment of certain goals i'll mention the definition by stephen robbins here motivation is a willingness to exert high level of effort towards organizational goal conditioned by the effort and ability to satisfy some individual need motivation is a managerial act and is very important part of organizational behavior because the manager the main function of a manager is to get thing done through others in a formally organized group now if they understand what motivate people what is the inner drive which is push- pushing people towards certain goal then it become very easy for the manager to get that particular behavior from the people working in the organization now what is the importance of motivation in the organization it lead to higher efficiency on in the organization so when you are working with a team of uh, highly motivated uh, employee uh, they will you will find they are more involved with the job they are giving 100% to their job so obviously the performance level the efficiency levels go up innovation happens in our organization wherein employees are very very involved now if motivated employees are there in the organization they are very unlikely to go out and talk bad about the organization they will be def- motivated they will put their 100% in the work, in their work and it will definitely add up to the corporate image team work become very easy when you have motivated employees with you motivated employees see to it that there is less wastage in the organization and it lead to optimum use of resources motivated employees are more uh, prone to attend the or uh, to attend on a daily basis they will take less leave so uh, the problem of absenteeism is also much less when you have a bunch of motivated employees labor turnover so if somebody is driven internally to do certain work such kind of individual are very unlikely to leave the organization they will stay with the organization so labor turnover problem of labor turnover also goes down motivated employees have a better relation with each other they are self driven and hence they are high on morale they don't depend on others to motivate them their managers they are not dependent on managers they are themselves uh, you know pushing themselves towards accomplishment of a goal they they have a very positive attitude and lastly the most important uh, they don't resist change because motivated employee wants to grow in the organization self motivated employees want to grow in the organization along with the organization and they know that change is only constant that organization can grow only when they change at par with the dynamic environment of the organization so they pose least resistance uh, when there is a change in the organization coming to the features of motivation it is the act of a manager 
so motivation to motivate the workforce the manager has to look into it what make the person excited in a work what exactly the inner drive is for an individual that is what the manager has to find out and accordingly have to motivate motivate each and every employee then motivation is a continuous process you cannot say okay one motive is achieved so uh, that person can uh, sit idle it is a continuous process one motive one once there is a accomplishment of one motive the next motive come into the picture so it goes on and on now motive can be a positive motive or it can be a negative motive but it is always a goal oriented motive is always going towards certain goal it is complicated in nature because motivation does not occur uh, in a simple form we can have multiple motive at a particular period of time now which motive to prioritize which motive to give importance to uh, that become very complicated or uh, individuals are at one point of time driven by which particular motive is very difficult to understand motivation is an art because you need to have a very good understanding of human uh, psychology uh, to motivate an individual motivation is different from job satisfaction so a motivated employee not necessarily will be a very satisfied uh, employee in the job so uh, motivated employee is something else and job satisfaction is something else and it is a system oriented approach motivations go through a system system of uh, want coming into the picture want getting transformed to need need getting transformed to need oriented goal and then finally need accomplishment the moment the need is accomplishment uh, accomplished the next need come into the picture and the motivation goes through goes on and on now behavioral scientists have different opinion about motivation some scientists feel that uh, the factors of motivation are within an individual they are already present within an individual and uh, the behavioral scientist who is of that opinion were clubbed under the content theory of motivation and there were some behavioral scientist who believed that motivation is a process it has to be created it has to be created through various stimulus and uh, some it is it depends on the manager how good they are in creating that motivation so behavioral scientist who believe that motivation is a process and is formed with the help of a stimuli were clubbed under the process theory of motivation. motivation so when we learn about motivational theories we get two different bunch of theories content theory and the process theory now under content theory the most popular theory and the theory which we are going to learn today are maslow's need hierarchy theory hertzberg's motivation hygiene theory maclellan's need theory elderfer's erg theory and another is macgregor's theory x and theory y and under process theory there are brooms expectancy theory adams equity theory goal setting theory reinforcement theory there are many more theory coming under process uh, theory of motivation but these are the most prominent one now the first theory of motivation that is maslow's need hierarchy theory abraham maslow uh was a psychologist who studied positive human qualities and the lives of exemplary uh, people and he came up with this uh, pyramid which became very popular because it was very easy to understand and uh, and is widely accepted now what he did in this uh, pyramid he said that the needs happen in the form of a pyramid like there are he arranged the need in certain order and said that once the lower order need is satisfied then only the people move on to the higher order need so this is how he identified five different order of need and arranged it in a form of a pyramid
So, the lowest order of need is a physiological need, then comes safety need, then comes uh, need for uh, love and belongingness, that is social need, then comes esteem need, and the final need is self-actualizing need. Now, coming to the physiological need, these are bodily need. For example, your need for food, water, sleep, rest, etc. is a physiological need. Now, once you are done with your physiological need, you go to the safety or the security need. That is, you need uh, to be assured of two square meal a day. You need a roof on your head. You need a security in your job. So, that you look for all those things. Now, once you conquer that, you need to move on to the next order need that is your social need. Now, social need is where you are looking for acceptance, you are looking for friend, you are looking for groups, you uh, you kind of uh, indulge in friendship and uh, all that. Once that order of need is satisfied, you move on to the esteem need. Now, esteem need is more to do with the ego. Esteem need is also known as an ego need. So, it is most mostly to do with your ego. Uh, so, basically you flaunt, you uh, uh, crave for respect, uh, position in the society. So, that is a esteem need. Now, once you are done with all these lower order need, then you can move on to the self-actualizing need. So, according to Maslow, this is the highest order of need and only an individual who, uh, who has conquered all the lower order need can achieve that full potential in their self-actualizing need. Now, though this uh, theory was a highly popular and well accepted, but then it was very, very much criticized. Very, very much criticized on the ground that uh, he has arranged the need in a particular order. And many behavioral scientists were of opinion that uh, motivation or uh, this motives cannot be placed in a particular order. We have, we are very complicated. Human beings are very complicated and driven by multiple motive at a particular point of time. So, these are the criticism of Maslow's theory. Need may or may not follow definitive hierarchical order. There may be overlapping uh, hierarchy. Uh, this model cannot be applied at all times and at all places. Then uh, researchers uh, also show that a man's behavior at any point of time is uh, guided by multiplicity of behavior and in some case the level of motivation may be permanently lower. For example, if you take somebody coming from a very well-off background, for them Two square meal a day or uh, is not at all a problem. A roof on their head is also not a problem. So, their physiological need and their security need is already addressed. So, those are not very prominent need. But maybe he is struggling with his uh, social need. He wants belongingness. He wants to belong to group. He wants to belong to a society. So, that could be very high compared to their physiological need and the next order need. Now, Alderfer was one such person, one such behavioral scientist who criticized Maslow's need hierarchy and came up with his own theory uh, by extending Maslow's need hierarchy theory. He actually clubbed the five order need of Maslow into three prominent need. That is need for existence, need for relatedness and need for growth. Now, the existence need is very similar to Maslow's physiological and security need. The relatedness need is uh, very similar to the social need of Maslow and growth need is very similar to esteem and the self-actualizing need of Maslow. 
Now, what, how his theory was different from Maslow's theory was that he said that all these needs are overlapping and you can never say at any point of time that an individual is done with one particular need and uh, can move on to the next order need. He said that these are all overlapping need. This can arise at the same point of time. An individual might be motivated uh, or individual behavior might be motivated by, by all these need at a particular point of time. The next theory that I'm going to talk about is Herzberg's theory. Now, Herzberg's motivation two-factor theory is based on his uh, research uh, wherein he actually made a survey about uh, the experiences and feeling among 200 engineers and accountants about uh, their job experiences in a particular organization. Now, he asks them two questions few job experiences which they feel exceptionally good about and few job experiences about which they feel exceptionally bad. Through this study, Herzberg concluded that there are two job conditions independent of each other and name one as a hygiene factor and other as a motivator. He said that the factor which are taken for granted, like whose presence is not very motivating, but whose absence is highly demotivating. He named it as a maintenance factor or hygiene factor. And the factors whose presence is highly motivating, but whose absence is uh, hardly uh, looked is known as a motivational factors or motivators. So, giving some example like hygiene factor, what is considered as a hygiene factor in the organization? The company policy and administration. So, you have you are working in an organization which has a very nice policy. They have their uh, leave policy very which help you to do a very good work-life balance. So, you might be very happy, but then you take it for granted. So, uh, your job security, your work condition, then your uh, relationship with your peer, subordinate, your supervisor, we tend to take those things just for granted. So, those are hygiene. They are, even if they are present in our life, we are, we are not excited about it. Okay, We just accept it as a routine. But if they are absent, we will not be able to give our 100% in the work. On the other hand, motivational factors are those uh, which are not done on a regular basis and when it is done, it really uh, motivate us, it really excites us, it really makes us happy. For example, if you are felicitated in front of everybody for your good deeds or uh, if you are um, given a pat on the back for your ideas by your boss, now these are not something very routine but when it happens, it makes you very very happy so he named them as a motivators thus Herzberg's motivation hygiene theory studied the variables which were responsible for the level of satisfaction and then applied in the industry that has given several new insight now there are certain critical analysis of Herzberg theory number one analysis was that it was limited to only engineers and accountants that to only 200 engineers and accountant in a particular organization then uh, this model is obviously not applicable in all um, in all condition because different job are uh, the way of doing different jobs are different and uh, the factors motivating people in different jobs are also different and uh, any improvement in hygiene factor will not able to motivate the workers but their reduction below a certain level will obviously dissatisfy them and it is very difficult to quantify how much below and how much above. Next, we come to David McClelland's uh, need theory. Now, David McClelland has identified three exclusive need. In his theory, has actually mentioned about three exclusive need. Need for power, need for affiliation and need for 
achievement. Now, need for power. Now, these are the people, people who are high on need for power are the one who are always looking for a position, who are always looking for uh, control in the organization. They are not driven by any challenges. They don't want to do any kind of challenging role, but they only want to uh, get into a particular position so that they can control. And this, as I said, these are all exclusive needs. So if an individual is high on need for power, he will not be having very high need for affiliation and need for achievement. And same applies to all other need. Next come need for uh, affiliation. Now, people who are high on need for affiliation is always looking for belongingness. They are a great team player and uh, their best performance comes out when they are working in a team and they are not the one who are looking for a powerful position or control over others neither are they looking for a great challenges in their work then there are people with high on uh, need achievement now these are the people who are looking for a challenging task they obviously they are not fools they are uh, they doesn't uh, take uh, risk like a gambler they take calculated risk and they are motivated to achieve great things see high achievers take the moderate risk that is a calculated risk while performing the activities in the management context high achievers seek to obtain immediate feedback for the work done by them so as to they can progress towards their goal so this is McClellan's need theory and it is also said McClellan has also established that entrepreneurs are mostly uh, motivated by this high need achievement. So entrepreneurs need to be very high on this need achievement to do something in their life. In fact, uh, through many experiment, eventually uh, one of them is Kakinara, famous Kakinara experiment, he established that uh, entrepreneurs can also be trained with this need uh, achievement that is the need achievement can be inculcated in the uh, entrepreneurs and from there we get this concept of EDP entrepreneurship development program so here it is written power motive ability to influence others affiliation motive to uh, likes to interact and be with others they want to belong they want to be accepted and achievement motive intense desire to achieve something the next theory that i'm going to talk about is mcgregor's theory x and theory y now theory x and theory y is based on uh, assumption the next theory that i'm going to talk about is mcgregor's theory x and theory y now theory x is based on a premise of a traditional management and theory y is based on a premise of a modern management and there is certain assumption for theory x and certain assumption for theory y now theory x assume that people dislike work they are they find work to be boring and that is why they avoid work as and when they can another assumption for theory x is people must be forced or bribed uh, then they uh, love to be directed be told as to what to do and what not to do then uh, people are motivated mainly by money and most of the people have very little creativity. The, on the other hand, theory Y, which is based on a premise of a modern management, here it is found, it is said that people need to work. People learn to work by themselves. So just like a baby learn to play, similarly people uh, learn to work by themselves because they are uh, motivated, inherently motivated to do that. 
people seek and accept responsibility people walk better and uh, feel good when responsibilities are given to them uh, under the right condition people are motivated by the desire to realize their own potential and creati creativity and ingenuity are widely distributed in people so creativity is something that is quite natural in people application of theory x and theory y now, since theory X is based on a premise of a traditional management, herein uh, it, it is much more inferior style of management because management has evolved over a period of time. Previously, uh, management was more concerned with uh, unskilled, semi-skilled workers and uh, now the scenario has changed. So, the way you were handling unskilled and semi-skilled worker, you cannot handle the uh, your literate and highly skilled worker in the similar fashion so theory x is applied in a um, in a large scale production operation wherein mostly unskilled laborer are employed and theory y uh, which is based on a premise of a modern management uh, feel that uh, people can do work by themselves so uh, like for example uh, in a knowledge economy back office job bpos call centers operations therein this particular style of management are is mostly accepted so theory y principle is uh, applied to encourage knowledge sharing and continuous improvement so here i end uh, my session with uh, the content theory of uh, motivation and uh, next time we will move on to the process theory of motivation. Thank you.